Well, Tesla CEO Elon Musk could be receiving a historic payday. The company's shareholders are set to vote on several key decisions this afternoon. Investors could decide to give Musk a $56 billion compensation package and uh, choose to move Tesla's legal headquarters to Del from Delaware to Texas. So Tesla's stock closed at just over $177 a share on Wednesday. That price continued to climb in pre-market trading. Alan Olsman is joining us now to talk a little bit more about today's meeting. He is a senior editor at Forbes. So there's, this is kind of like a bit of a saga here, right? Um, and I should also say that I think a lot of this compensation comes in, in stock, and the stock is not as robust as it was, I think, maybe when we were quoting this $56 billion number. So it might be, you know, still billion, so, like, so it's billions. It's like $46 billion I, I, You instead. could survive on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, so what's at stake today uh, with the vote, and is there sort of, any inkling about how this might play out? Because Elon Musk came out and said, oh, the vote's going to go in his favor. Right. Um, he did. Uh, last night, he said the preliminary results look like he's secured enough votes to have his compensation restored. And to your earlier point, the current value is somewhere below $50 billion at okay. this point, between 45 and 50, depending on where the stock price is on any given day. Um, the implications are are significant uh, in some ways. This is a show of support from uh, shareholders that they very much do want to reward him um, and restore uh, the, the stock that was taken away, the stock awards that were taken away by a judge in Delaware back in January. And in part, it's to, uh, as the chair of Tesla has said, keep him very motivated to, to focus on Tesla, to make it his primary focus. As you know, uh, Elon Musk is involved in a lot of companies these days. And one concern is uh, from some shareholders is that it's no longer his top priority, that X, the former Twitter, XAI, SpaceX, other companies are pulling him away uh, from Tesla more and more. So the thinking goes, let's restore this massive stock award, and that will keep him highly motivated to make Tesla number one um, in, in what he's focused on. So uh, what would that mean uh, ultimately for uh, his shareholders, uh, for his bottom line? I mean, the idea that he's going to receive this record-breaking payout. Uh, I, I don't know. Tesla as a company, I think people who own vehicles, you, you still have yours, right? Mm -hmm. I do. You, you, I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, they're happy with those vehicles. I like it. Uh, but what's the deal with the Cybertruck? Like, it, it mm, didn't, didn't, that was the, you know, That bank. one's not doing so well. Right, I, I heard it cuts think. people's fingers off or something. I, I didn't that's hear what, that's that. What, that's, but... what, that's what TikTok tells me. But, like, <laughs> I, I, and I'm sort of joking a little bit, but the reality is that this car company, as innovative as it is, hasn't really moved the needle in terms of how people are purchasing well, cars. No, well, it's still the number one selling electric vehicle in the world. Right. And maybe, you know, that China, that Chinese company beat them out for like maybe a month, but then Tesla got right back on top. So I don't know if you can completely sort of poo-poo it, but certainly the stock has, you know, started to take a hit as he started to cut the prices right. of Tesla's and people are wondering what's the master plan? What's the master plan? Well, that's that's a great question. Um, and to your point, um, the Cybertruck is not so far proving to be the big success um, he was hoping. Um, the big issue is affordability. Um, going all the way back to the beginning of Tesla, Musk had set a top priority of making Tesla an, ultimately an affordable car brand. Um, it has come down in price considerably, but it's still typically retailing in, in, in the 40,000s, mid to high 40,000s um, at the entry level. Uh, you mentioned BYD, which is growing rapidly in China. BYD is far more um, affordable, and that's a real challenge. There is some concern about whether Tesla is going to be able to um, move into um, a more mass market product, something starting perhaps in the high $20,000 range. Um, that the outlook for that is very murky at the moment. Any such product is probably not going to be on the market for a few years. And that's that's a big challenge. Um, globally, EV sales, there's a lot of competition. The Chinese are tough, but so are the Koreans and, and even the U.S. manufacturers have some strength. And right now, you know, Tesla needs more than the Cybertruck to really turn things around. To your point, the stock is down about 30 percent this year. Um, and uh, on the stock uh, vote today or the stock award vote, it's really just the shareholders voicing support. Nothing immediately changes. Um, the judge's ruling in January will still stand uh, for the time being. Um, what's going to happen is the board would have to come back with an entirely new compensation award that would 
in, include um, the equivalent amount of, of, of stock that was taken away. But this is going to be something of a long process. <laughs> so it's not clear exactly when he is going to get that, you know, 50 billion or so worth of stock uh, sent Al, back to him. If it's still worth that. Yeah, Alan, <laughs> let me ask you real quickly, just before you go. Um, it, it's so interesting that you say that the uh, Asian competitors are ultimately going to be able to put out a, a cheaper but still high quality mm -hmm. competitor to what Tesla is offering. I, I, I wonder mm -hmm. if this is, we're, we're, we're going to see something not completely similar, but somewhat similar to what we saw in the 1970s and 1980s when Japanese car manufacturers started producing cars that were just as good as American cars, got better mileage, uh, and were cheaper. Yeah, and here's the problem. Here's the challenge for China. Yeah. Will they be allowed to sell those cars? Well, that's the question. But you also yeah. mentioned the Koreans here, and others, I mean. right? So yeah. if they can produce those vehicles and they can get them here to the consumers in the United States, will Tesla have to come down in price or at least produce a car that is a little cheaper than the ones that are now? Because the complaint that I hear is that they're too expensive. Right. And the parallel you mentioned is, is a really good one. Um, you know, the Japanese in, in the 70s and 80s came in with uh, high quality, lower price products, and, and it really hammered uh, Detroit for years and years and years. The exact same thing I think we're seeing unfolding in the EV space. China um, has become, you know, the, the the place to beat at this point. BYD in particular is really doing some dramatic things in terms of product price, and that's very tough. We are, you know, passing uh, tariffs and and, and implementing uh, rules that will keep out those products for the time being. But ultimately, it, it will put a lot of pressure on 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 all EV makers and especially Tesla to be right. competitive in the. All right, Alan. Thank you very much, my friend. Appreciate it.